whatever we would do at whatever level in Europe, it has to be stakeholder driven and it has to be bottom up. Meaning, we should not reinvent the wheel, play a federating, confederating role, and we should make sure that all stakeholders are to a maximum involved so that it is driven by the stakeholders and not driven by the Commission. So these are the most important lessons. Three areas of action, but two parameters, bottom up stakeholder group. I think the, the Commission has a policy open access for publications and a, and a pilot project on uh, open access for data. Uh, all, all researchers told us that one of the most important problems for developing open science is the lack of incentives. Now, one incentive is funding. So if, if with your funding you, you, you push in the direction of open science, then you, give a, then, you give a, then, then you give a big incentive. That explains why we are still in, in, in a pilot for the data because that is not something where everyone is, is, is fully behind, but inevitably we will, might go in that direction. Publishers are key in the scientific enterprise, but they are not more key as anyone else. It is inevitable that the publishers must be on board, but what I learned from, from the discussions we had with the players, and we talked to almost everyone including, they are well aware of, of the changes in the publishing world, and it's encouraging to see that, the scientific publishing community of Europe is, is also preparing himself, themselves for the change. So this is, uh, this is encouraging because, you know, if, if, you, if you have, in, in the history of technology, if you have this kind of paradigm shifts, you go from one way of doing things to another way, regardless if it is now it is in, in science, but it used to be in the economy 20 years ago and you went to a digital economy, well, you always have this kind of conflicting interests and, and, and uh, and people trying to, to capitalize on past, past, uh, past positions and, and trying to block future things. But that is something where the Commission precisely has to play the role of a broker and try to level the playing field and show the win-win. One of the things to do, in my view, uh, for, resulting from the consultation, is to set up this, this stakeholder forum to look at the issues. What is recurrent? Uh, in, in, all that, in, 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 in all these discussions is that uh, all researchers we talk to are more or less uh, on our side with regard to understanding the changes ahead and, and all of them, almost all of them said uh, if we want to go forward the career system has to gratify open science. So the incentive issue, you see, the incentive is always coming back. If there is no incentive for me to share my data, why would I do it? If there is an incentive, I will certainly do it. That's a resume, resume or actual of most of the reactions. Bringing in citizens, and here we talk about trained citizens, unscientifically trained persons cannot take part in, in, in all these experiments. Now bringing in citizens as, as a kind of distributed brain power in scientific uh, 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 experiments like Galaxy Zoo is doing when, 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 when scanning, scanning the universe. Uh, that's fantastic and that is, that, is, that is something we should only encourage because this is a, this is a distributed way of, of uh, gathering knowledge. The accountability discussion which you sometimes find under citizen science is another discussion. What we are now talk, talking about is using distributed brain power uh, amongst your citizens to contribute to, to, to scientific experiments. You also get this discussion about citizens' participation in the, in the decision making on science. Very, very legitimate, but that's not what, what is citizen science on the open science.